everybody. Uh, thank you for letting us know we're recording in progress. Uh, good morning. My name is Cindy Cummings. I'm one of the founders of LT Senior Services. We run a nonprofit, and our goal is to help older adults in the Lake Travis area. And one of the things that we do is we do seminar webinars and we've got lots of people online today who are watching our seminar we're so happy to have you here um before we get started i'd like to introduce introduce some of our members of lt senior services so morgan and Teresa, come on up here and we're just going to let them just tell you a little bit about them uh, we're made up of 43 members and these members are nonprofits and for profits and uh, they help us to financially support our events and also be the um, information for our seminars and our webinars. So here we go, our first member. Thank you so much. And do I look at the camera? Uh, the camera is right here. Okay, actually, I'm gonna as close to your mouth as possible. Okay, this is good. Yes. My name is Teresa Martinez. Thank you for having me. I'm a new member of the LT Senior Service Community. I am founder of Roots and Remedy. I'm a cellular health coach and holistic wellness practitioner. So what I do for my patients is help them with holistic and natural remedies and native remedies that I educate about, um, which is um, cell signaling, cell repair, and cell rejuvenation with a redox technology breakthrough. So if you want to learn more, I'm an online coach, so I can do this for all of you that are listening far away. Um, you can just connect with me. Um, I know they're not here, but at Roots and Remedy on Instagram and Facebook if you want to connect there. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, in the back, if you want some more information. Hi, everybody. I am Morgan McMillan, the director at the Lake Travis Community Library. Thank you for coming to see us this morning. I've got three quick things to plug. Number one, you've probably heard me talk about this before. We have a home delivery service. If you have a friend or a neighbor or someone you know who can't get to the library for because of a medical reason, let us know. We'll sign them up and drop them off a bag of books once a month. It's super easy. Please help us spread the word. Number two, I want you to think of the library when you need technology help. I got an emergency call from my mom this morning. I understand. I have emergency calls to myself. We can't keep up. <laughs> Come to the library Monday through Thursday, 12 until 2. You can work one-on-one -on -one with a tech coach. Or every Wednesday morning, we have a tech tutorial online at 1030, usually taught by our amazing Karen Scott or our amazing Linda Joyner on a variety of topics, but there's always an opportunity for question and answer on those Wednesday tech tutorials. The third thing I wanna talk about is Lake Travis Reads. Once a year, we partner with BK Public Library, Spicewood Community Library, and Lake Travis, and we usually bring in an author for a community read event. So this year, it's at Lake Travis Community Library a week from tomorrow, next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Oh, there's the slide for it. Lake Travis Reads, the Modern Pioneer Cookbook. Mary Bryant Schrader is one of our regular library patrons, and she is famous on YouTube with almost a million followers for her cooking channel. So she has a brand new cookbook published by Penguin DK Random House, big publisher, lots of press, and she's our library patron. So it's gonna be super fun next Wednesday, seven o'clock. If you wanna know more, I'll talk your ear off afterwards. Thank you. So we wanted to have those members come up and introduce themselves. Our other members are up here and I'm going to introduce them with beautiful bios, but they're gonna sit here and be on the hot seat for another minute or two. Okay. So I was talking about LT Senior Services. Uh, so we do lots of different things. We've got a homecoming event coming up this Saturday. We are partnering with Chariot. So if you know somebody who would like to come but can't drive there, Chariot will come and pick you up. Have you heard of Chariot before? Yeah, they're awesome. So they are a nonprofit and their goal is to help non-driving seniors get to where they want to go and they want to support social events. We also have a Trail of Lights. Did anybody go to the Trail of Lights last year? with us yeah so um last year we met at the activity center and then we went and walked the trail lights we had hot cocoa and cookies and it was really really super fun so we hope that you might join us for that that's december 4th and then next month our speaker is going to be immunity and brain boost immunity and brain boost super excited um so that'll be in october that will be our next seminar I'm going to move this out. Will it impact? I feel like I'm talking behind truth. Okay. 
You can't see me. I don't mind not being seen. But... <laughs> <laughs> Did you talk about the accent? Yeah, hold on. Can you see me now? <laughs> okay. Can you see me now? Okay. <laughs> Don't forget about the expo. The expo is next week. Super excited. Starts at nine o'clock. We're going to have breakfast tacos. We have exhibitors, speakers. We've got three great speakers. We're going to be learning about the new changes in Medicare. Who wants to just, when they think about having to change Medicare, it's a tough one. So we're going to talk about the changes for that. And we've got two doctor, doctors coming to speak. So we're super excited. We're going to have exhibitors. We have about 30 exhibitors. And we will have free drawings. We have a free lunch. And um, we might be able to get you there if you're having trouble get there too. So just let us know that. Um, what else? Oh my goodness. We had somebody contact us about the Lake Travis Senior Gold Card. Has anybody heard of the Lake Travis Senior Gold Card? Okay. So we have applications up here for you. It's super easy. If you want to fill out the application, we'll mail it for you. Basically, this is what they say. This is from Lake Travis Independent School District. Your ticket to great free entertainment. Who doesn't want free entertainment? So over the years, our senior residents have made many contributions to Lake Travis ISD students and schools. Now the Lake Travis ISD wants to say thank you. Residents of Lake Travis ISD who are over 65 years old or eligible for membership in the Senior Gold Card Program at no charge. You get free admission to LTIS cultural events, such as plays and musicals and concerts, free admission to regular athletic events, free general admission seating at the LTISD stadiums. Now, remember you have to, you have to like get the ticket because have you heard about the football team already? There's no seats left and you know, the typical thing for football. Um, so you do need to get tickets. How fun is that? So we've got applications right up here. So if you want to fill it out, we'll mail them for you. Okay. It was cool in here, but now I'm feeling kind of warm. I think it's being up here in front of all these people. What do you think? <laughs> well, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get uh, started on our topic. And our topic for today is talking about thriving in retirement and senior living options. So we are really blessed in the Lake Travis area to have many great different options for senior living. And we have many of those professionals sit, seated up here today on the hot seat. So we're excited to have them here. Let me go ahead and read their bios so you will know who they are and who they work for. And I have to go to my phone for one of them. Hold on one sec. Okay, Teresa, she's sitting right here. Hello. She is the Assistant Executive Director. Oh, you just got a promo. Awesome. She's been in the senior living industry for 15 years. She's got three grown children. I just lost everything. Technology. <laughs> Anybody else relate to this? Anybody else have problems with this? She has three grown children. Her eldest daughter lives in Austin and works for Facebook. Her middle daughter is in San Antonio at dental school, and her youngest son is at UT Dallas, and he'll be graduating in, in December. She has lived in Lakeway for four years and loves living in the Austin area. She has lots of family here, including her parents, who are older adults. Probably one of the reasons why you moved here. Is that right? Well, yes and no. <laughs> we, um, this is being recorded. I have to remember that just in case my mom watches. Um, <laughs> okay, let me go on with the others. John Brown, he's seated down at the end. He's kind of obvious down there, right? So John, he began his career in 1979 when he went to work in the pharmacy retail drugstore. He spent 36 years with one company and had the opportunity to learn and grow as the Central Texas and Austin area can turn, continue to expand. He and his wife has, have always been committed to staying in the Austin area to raise their children. It's truly a special place to raise a family. One of his goals is to have the next chapter of his life is by giving back to local nonprofits serving the aging population. As a community leader and local volunteer, serving people has always been his passion. As a caregiver for his mother, as she progressed through the later stages of dementia with added complex medical conditions, he's learned firsthand the challenges facing families during these difficult transitions. He's also reminded of the responsibilities we have to honor and focus on the aging population. He's committed himself to helping seniors through tr transitions and their daily living needs, offering dignity and passion to do what's best for them. You don't even mention your company here. 
So it's Oasis Senior Living Advisors. <laughs> so um, John will explain what that means and how he can help you through the process. Uh, Landria is right here next to Teresa, and she's with Belmont Village Lakeway. She received her Master's in Health Administration and Graduate Certificate as a Licensed Nursing Facility Administrator from Texas State University in 2014. Her Bachelor's in Biomedical Science from Grand Valley State University in 2011. Leandria currently carries her Assisted Living and Skilled Nursing Facility Administer License in addition to her Certified Dementia Practitioner. Leandria is a dedicated and enthusiastic professional with over 15 years experience in geriatric communities. Landria joined Belmont Village Lakeway as a Community Relations Association, Associate in November of 2017. And you've been in Lakeway for how many years? 2001? Uh, Lakeway. Yeah. How long has Belmont Village oh, been? Belmont opened in 2018. Yeah, Belmont Village opened in 2018. It seems like just yesterday. It's so weird. I'm just like, I just opened. No, it's been open for a while. Janet is sitting next to John, and she's from the Brixton at Horseshoe Bay, and she started a long-term care industry 40 years ago as a nursing assistant. She worked in that field for many years and then went on to the University of Florida to become a dietary manager, also continued to work in long-term care setting. She served as a backup admissions team and discovered her passion for sales, marketing, and helping people during their times of need. In 2008, she started her career in admissions sales and marketing. And she's currently regional director of business development for a private skilled nursing rehabilitation and long-term care company. And that's the Brixton. Yes, awesome. She's got two adult children, five grandchildren, one great grandson. Oh my goodness. You are a lucky lady. Um, Teresa works for Arbor Terrace. I didn't mention that. So I do want to yeah, make note of that. Okay, Adela Gonzalez, Brookdale Lakeway and Lomans Crossing. So she's the Area Director of Business Development for Brookdale Senior Living. She supports business development with other uh, internal sales teams in the Austin market, which is nine communities. Adela graduated from the University of Texas Rio Grande with a bachelor's degree in business and is graduating with her master's degree in December. Awesome. What, yeah, what is it in? What's your master's? Uh, in marketing. In marketing. Excellent. Uh, during her undergrad, she experienced a senior living search for her grandfather, and Adela instantly knew that working in this industry was something that she wanted to pursue. In her free time, she enjoys spending time with family, hiking, journaling, cooking, and learning from self-development and business podcasts. Woo! So... These are some really amazing people with lots of different exciting backgrounds. And I think one of the themes we learn a lot is their experience in senior living. A lot of it has to come from their own personal experiences because once you've gone through that, you want to help other people. And I do think um, until people go through a hunt for senior living, they really just don't understand it, how to start. Uh, what different terms mean, and we're super excited today to be able to give you just kind of basic information about your options in senior living. So we have questions that we're going to ask, and uh, when we're done with the questions, we will ask questions of the audience. So if you could hold your questions till then, that would be great, because we likely will answer them as we're going through. So um, we're just going to kind of go down the line and ask the same question. What you're going to learn is um, senior living is very different. Everybody has really positive things that make them be different from other ones. And that's what we hope that you'll learn more about each of the different senior living communities. Okay, so first to begin with, we've already introduced everybody, um, but just like in a minute, tell us about Arbor Terrace. We're going to get in more detail, but just like, you know, the basics. Elevator. Okay, so Arbor Terrace is a senior living community that uh, we have assisted living and memory care. Uh, it is a great place to live and work. We are on one of the best, on the best places to work. Uh, it's a very warm and welcoming. I think you feel it from the door right when you walk in. Great. Uh, so I work at Belmont Village Lakeway, and we offer independent living, assisted living, memory care, and then our Circle of Friends program. Uh, one of the biggest differentiators is uh, that our community is actually, everything is licensed as a type B assisted living. So our residents are truly given the opportunity to age in place in one space in our community. 
Um, so the biggest differentiator, and then uh, our community also offers our Circle of Friends program, which is uh, memory programming that's offered for residents that are early to mild stages of cognitive health. Good morning, everyone. And Brookdale does have two communities here in, in Lake White. We have Brookdale on its crossing. We call it our little Brookdale. That's right next to the Catholic Lake White uh, Church. And that's a standalone assisted living type B uh, community. Uh, so you have that one. And then we have Brookdale Lakeway. That's our CCRC. The, that concept is continuum of care retirement, where you have type A assisted living, memory care, skill nursing, and rehab. So Brookdale Lakeway and Brookdale Lowen's Crossing. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. The Brixton at Horseshoe Bay is a privately owned and operated 120 bed skill nursing rehab and long-term care facility. The owners, um, originally were in construction and they built nursing homes, assisted, assisted livings and things. This was their last building, this is their flagship and we're very proud of it. Hi, uh, John with Oasis Senior Advisor. So John, we, help, closer. we help families navigate senior care and senior living, understanding which is the right community, why it's the right community. Um, our service is free and confidential. We understand that families, when nobody wakes up in the morning and says, hey, I'm gonna go to senior living today. Um, it's it's always very stressful um, making the decision, but also finding the right community or what you're looking for, and that's what we do. Our service is free. Um, that's it. Great, John. Keep the mic. I'm going to ask you the next question. So, uh, tell me the three reasons why you think people make the move to senior living. The three main reasons. Um, one would be a health event. So mm -hmm. somebody's had a health event. They you know, recently um, could have had a fall, could have had a stroke, um, or uh, the second one would be isolation. Uh, a lot of, during COVID, we all experienced a lot of isolation, uh, anxiety, depression, I think is the second. Um, I run into so many seniors that are just lonely, depressed, or they've lost a loved one, and, and they're struggling to cope. And that's really a, a real plus for senior living. Um, and then third, it's, it's a financial decision. When you start to need care, a lot of people will kind of look around and, and that's one of the things we help with is, you know, what is the best way to proceed financially to protect those assets? And often senior living is a, a cheaper option. Um, sure, everybody wants to stay in their home as long as possible, but once you start reading, reaching a certain point in care, the cost becomes quite prohibitive and it can get out of hand very quickly. I'm just going to pass it down. So if you guys have anything to add, you can just add. The question again. Okay. <laughs> it's hard when you're sitting up here, your mind's kind of like, uh, what are the three main reasons that people might choose to move to your community? For long-term care is usually why people move to our community. They can no longer take care of their um, what we call ADLs, activities of daily living at home. Um, what we see a lot of times is women, no offense guys, will take care of their spouse at home and they're scared to put them in a facility because they think that they're going to become indigent and that is not the case at all. We'll talk more about that. And to add to that, another component could be um, they don't want to maintain the house, right? So keeping up with the house, even myself, just doing the chores and the, the laundry and the maintenance, um, that's another feature of why people choose to live, uh, move to a senior living community to have that taken away and us take care of it. Same, all those options. Um, another thing I see at our community is uh, we have a lot of couples that will uh, inquire our community because they may need some support for their loved one, their spouse that may need, whether they have cognitive or care needs, uh, they look at making the move to our community because they get that additional support for the care and then have that option to have a social environment, be around people who may be going through the exact same thing that they're going through. Yes, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, you know, Thanksgiving is coming and um, I think all of you will agree that our business really picks up after Thanksgiving because children come home for Thanksgiving and kind of see, oh, mom is struggling or dad is struggling, mom can't take care of dad. Um, and so our phone rings a lot after Thanksgiving. Um, 
seniors don't always recognize it themselves. It's usually the family that um, is helping to make those decisions. Um, even though as a senior, you ultimately make the decision on where you want to live, hopefully, um, it's it's the children, I think, that push it. And I'm, I'm speaking from experience on that with my two <laughs> parents right now. I call myself the helicopter daughter. Yes. Yeah. We, we hear about the helicopter parents of the younger children. I'm the helicopter daughter. Can't help it. Okay. Um, Teresa, I'm going to ask you this question. So tell us what an apartment looks like in assisted living as far as a kitchen and, you know, um, just in general. So uh, in assisted living, we prepare three meals a day, seven days a week for our residents. So the kitchen, it's a really a kitchenette is what we call it. But at Arbor Terrace, you actually do have a full-size refrigerator with a freezer. There's a microwave. Um, in my one bedroom apartment, there's an L-shaped countertop. Um, the finishes have been upgraded. So hopefully it's like what you had at home. Um, very comparable and updated. Um, one bedrooms are available. We have two bedrooms that are available. Your two bedroom is gonna also have two baths. So um, you have two bathrooms if you need it and nice living areas. Um, my two bedroom is like 900 square feet. My one bedroom is right at 500 square feet, which kind of sounds small, but I have a model if you want to come see it. It's, it feels very roomy, actually. And then we do have studio apartments as well. And a studio is kind of like what it sounds, but it still has the kitchenette um, with the full-size fridge and the microwave and some built-in cabinetry. Great. Landry, what do you have in independent living? What, how would your kitchen differ in independent living versus assisted, or does it? Uh, the biggest difference would be having uh, two stovetop burners. Our independent living apartments offer kitchenettes similar uh, to what's offered at Arbor Terrace. Uh, the biggest difference is having the two stovetop burners, and then our independent living apartments will also have a washer and dryer in them. So the biggest difference yeah, is how about you? What would you say are some of your differences in your different apartments that you have? For the Brookdale Lakeway, the CCRC Continuum of Care community, you have options. There's studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms. Some bedrooms do have patios if you would like your private patio. And then for Brookdale Lowman's, you have strictly studios, comfortable a studio with a kitchenette setting. Content. Skilled nursing and rehab, um, our building is divided on the rehab side. The rooms are private because there's different goals typically for the rehab patients. Their goal is to go home. On our long-term care side, the rooms are semi-private. Um, we, Our patients are a little bit higher acuity than typical assisted living or independent living residents. So we don't have the microwaves or the refrigerators. We do have common areas. All meals are provided, of course, snacks, activities during the day. The one thing that does set our building apart from other long-term care facilities, it's going to sound funny, but there's private showers in every room, and that is huge in our industry. Okay. Well, John, can you, this is, maybe we just started with you. Can you just tell us the different levels of care and what you might see in general? So 55 apartment, independent living. Right. So in the central Texas area from New Braunfels to Waco, there's approximately 400 senior living communities. Um, and they're not the same, right? You, yeah. you just heard them. They're, they're all not the same, either structurally or how they care for people inside. So the different levels of care, I mean, you have 55 plus apartments, so it's just your regular apartment. Um, you pay your electric, your water, your gas. doesn't include any meals or anything like that. Um, then you have independent living, which a lot of places will say they're independent living, but there is a distinction. Um, independent living includes meals, uh, light housekeeping, uh, transportation, social stimulation, and it's usually all in one building. Um, there are some uh, communities that are a little different. Then you have assisted living type A. Uh, that's the lower level of assisted living. That's where you can get out of the building on your own, uh, but maybe you just need some help with dressing or bathing or some light duties. And then as uh, Adele was mentioning, there's uh, assisted living type B. That is a higher level. 
that is where you can't get out of the building on your own and someone has to be there 24 hours a day to get you out. Um, and as we go through these, the caregiver to patient ratio comes down, right? More, more caregivers to, to patients. Um, memory care is a more secured environment for those people who you know, wander alone, have behaviors or have severe advanced dementia and could be a threat to themselves or others. Um, you know, some people live in that environment and it's just because they're confused, but most of the time it's because there's some kind of other, you know, situation where they're cognitively not able to understand how to care for themselves or they're a wanderer or a loafer or something like that. And then skilled nursing. So skilled nursing has two different avenues. So you have the rehab, uh, which you would go to, let's say after a hospital stay, that's covered under Medicare. And then the skilled nursing has the long-term care side. Um, and that's that's for those people who have the highest care needs. Usually it's for people who need much more medical complex care. Um, while all these communities have nurses on staff, it's the skilled nursing that has 24 hour nursing, um, can do IVs, can do injections and things like that. Most of that is, is on the medical side. Um, and so that's usually covered under Medicare. While you have the mic, you want to just go ahead and answer just in general the cost, what the prices are for each of those. Well, programs. so every, yeah, I wish there was one community that could take everybody that everybody could afford, but it doesn't <laughs> exist that way. So in central Texas, okay, you can find independent living starting as low as 1600. You can find assisted living starting as low as 2500. You can find memory care starting as low as 3200. But it again, it depends on where, okay? In Lake Travis, the cost is, is higher. You know, that's this area is more expensive. Uh, Cedar Park going over into Leander is still a little high. You start going into Round Rock and into Pflugerville, the cost drops. Uh, you go along east of I-35, South Austin, the cost drops. And then once you start getting out into the uh, hill country, um, your, your options go down, but your cost also could be much lower. So, there is something out there for everybody based on their budget, it, it, but you have to, we have to know your care before we can know what's the right option for you, right? Um, not everybody can afford every community, unfortunately. Great. Okay, so the next question um, would be, what would disqualify you from coming to your community? So what would be, if somebody is too healthy, could they not live there? I guess that's really the question, or if their uh, needs are too great. So what are some things that disqualify somebody from being in your community? For skilled nursing and long-term care behaviors, um, the obvious suicidal or homicidal tendencies, and we do see those things. As far as cost goes, we do accept Medicaid. So if you were eligible for that, you could apply for Medi Medicaid. Um, if you're private pay, anybody can live there, basically, if you can afford our private pay. It is 24-hour nursing care, so our costs are higher, I think, than assisted living or independent living, but we are providing the 24-hour licensed nursing care. Right. How about you? What are, some, what are some reasons why somebody would not be appropriate to live in your community? Um, for Brookdale Lomans Crossing, it's a standalone assisted living. So if we start getting residents that are having challenges with forgetfulness or they're wandering off, then we partner with a Brookdale Lakeway community who has uh, memory care for that component, right? And then so for Brookdale Lakeway, we are a type A. Um, did, like John mentioned, you have to be able to evacuate on your own in order to uh, live in the Brookville Lakeway, that makes sense. We do have, however, skilled nursing rehabilitation in our building in the event if it's higher acuity care need, you have that alternative resource there. Or we partner with Brookville Lomans or with one of our local partners to find a home. So for your skilled nursing, do you have both sides where you have the rehab side and you have the long-term Yes. Okay. So if somebody breaks a hip, they could come in and get rehab yes, there. That's a rehab and that's and a short stay and it's paid by insurance. Uh, we do have, although in our Brookville Lakeway, we have what it's called Medicaid spend down. So if you do your uh, private pay and you're paying through your senior living options in Brookville Lakeway, 
you can apply for Medicaid. And because you did the spend down with us at Brookville Lakeway, we can um, work through the process of Medicaid. Now, I don't want to get into in depth. You do have to meet pre qualifications, right? Uh, have to have a clinical diagnosis and be able to do that uh, spend down with us. Okay, great. So, Thelma Village Lakeway, um, we're licensed as a type B assisted living. So, we're licensed to the highest level of care. Um, one of the differentiators of our building uh, is that we do have a nurse on site 24 7. Um, so, that gives you an additional level of oversight. So, we're able to manage um, diabetes, like sliding scale, uh, insulins. We're able to manage uh, peg tubes, like feeding tubes. Um, so we're really kind of able to provide a lot of that care and all and allow that resident to remain in our community all the way through end of life and hospice care. Um, so Arbor Terrace is actually a type B uh, community as well. Um, it, but there are some different differences. We we limit our care staff to if a resident needs more than a two person assist. Um, a lot of times we kind of look at our care staff and the capabilities, and it might be a better fit for a Bell Lodge or a Brookdale. Um, we do have nursing on staff. We have it seven days a week, but we do not have nursing overnight. It's an on-call nurse overnight. Um, med techs are in place for overnight, so usually um, there's not a need for a nurse overnight unless there's been a disaster or something critical has happened. But we uh, do have hospice in the building. We have home health in the building. We have type A and B um, for physical therapy, any therapies. Um, but what would prevent you from coming in is if you needed a Hoyer lift, you could not stand and pivot. One of the... Um, I don't think we mentioned this, but one of the qualifications is the state regulation that you have to be able to bear weight to come into assisted living. Once, yes, and then once you're there, you can decline um, and become non-weight bearing. But um, and then we have to, you know, see what we need to do to take care of you at that point. Right. What is a common misconception? So when you sit down with the family, I know I used to work for a company and people would ask me about senior living and they would say, my mom needs to go in a nursing home. Okay. And I'd say, well, what does she need? Oh, she needs some transportation and some meals. I'm like, it's, you don't need a nursing home. <laughs> so just name one misconception. That is the number one. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to a home. <laughs> Twice. So uh, I think you guys all agree. Yeah. We um, dispel that myth by saying, have you ever been on a cruise? Because actually this is like a cruise ship that never leaves the port. We've got activities, um, even though we can support you with whatever is ailing you and what support you might need, we're gonna focus on the fun. And um, I think we're all really good at that. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Uh, Let's do this then. Yeah. Let's talk about um, activities that you have in your community. Why don't you start with activities that people can enjoy at your community? We have a wide variety. Uh, every day we will start with an exercise, group exercise. We want to wake the body up. Uh, we'll incorporate uh, brain exercises uh, throughout different activities, whether that's crosswords, um, lifelong learning uh, partnerships with Ollie. Um, different speakers that come in, professors. It's a kind of a wide variety. The thing that I love most is since I've been there the whole time is just seeing how the calendars morph um, because it's it's a good reflection of our residents and what they like to do. Um, so a lot of ours are Lake Travis residents. They like their winery tours. So they got to <laughs> um, see the beaches out there. They've gone up to um, Marble Falls to do the Sweet Berry Farms. Um, they go out and try to get live music. They have their happy hours and live music every week. Um, going out shopping, um, trying all the new uh, businesses that are opening up here in the Lake Travis area. Uh, but yeah, they're busy. Yeah, they are very busy. No, I, she nailed it too. Yes. I mean, other activities, some residents do want to stay engaged and involved in the community. So they will actually teach a course, right? I have a resident at Brookville Lakeway. She does the painting, beautiful painting. So there's painting involved. We try to personalize it. So if there's something in the calendar that 
we're not doing, our residents are always uh, wanting to teach at class to our other residents yeah, and outings cool. and events, how, dances. How about residents going, um, how about residents going to their churches or going to some activities already that are happening to help yeah. get them there? Absolutely. So if we actually have our Catholic church, they will go to our communities. They'll come, Emmaus Church will come to the community, Lakeway and Lomas Crossing. Now, we do have to have at least four members um, for Sunday Mass Church to take them. Okay. Um, but yes, we can arrange that. Great. We do arts, crafts, live entertainment. We have resident and family council. Um, the resident council is where they can come and talk about what they like, what they don't like, what they want to see happening. Um, we have pet therapy that comes in, parties. Lots of fun. I want to go back to this fellow myth. Um, <laughs> one of the myths is, is, you know, that we don't need senior living. I don't need senior living. I can stay at home and, and I, especially since COVID, I've, I've seen so many seniors who, you know, wanted to stay in their home and, and we understand that, but not to consider it. Um, nothing's worse than getting a phone call two years later and either A, they've spent all their money on home care and now they're, we're having to discuss Medicaid <laughs> or B, their care has gotten so high um, that you know there are little options because it, it does get quite expensive as the care gets higher. Uh, you know, and maybe cognitively that person thinks, well, I, I should be able to do everything and I should live an independent living, but physically, you know, we're looking at a type B or we're looking at skilled nursing. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with just the misconception that senior living is only when you need care. It it really isn't. If if you're just feeling unsteady and you want someone to be there for bathing when you're there in the room, it's okay. If you're struggling with med management or just getting out or you're tired of meals, you're tired of doing the yard work, you should at least look at all the options. Um, you know, that's one thing we do is we sit down with the family, we go over all the care, what you're looking for, what's your long-term diagnosis. You know, sometimes we run into people who, have been diagnosed with Parkinson's, but right now they're still independent and doing everything. Well, you need to know that with Parkinson's, you could need memory care. So if you're going to move into a senior living community, it may be independent now, but it needs to have that assisted living and or memory care on premise. So everybody's journey is unique. And I just think sometimes the old nursing home, right? That, that everybody's scared of a nursing home. And they're scared to look at all the options. And, and that's the beauty of us is, you know, we don't, we'll give you the options. We'll show you the options and we don't give out your information. Um, and I also forgot to mention two other types of senior living. Um, one is a personal care home. That is a house with 24 hour caregivers that are there. Those are smaller. They're usually three to four residents. Um, so, you know, it might be four ladies living together with the, the caregivers there. Um, and then, and then there's a type B assisted living that's called a residential care home. That's an actual house. Um, the big difference between living in a home that's assisted living versus a community is if you're not real social, your activities are more like reading, things like that, or if your care is starting to get really high. Um, so in a residential care home setting, the caregiver to patient ratio can come all the way down to three to one. So if your spouse is, you know, somebody who says, I got to go to the bathroom, they'll take it. Like, it's just that fast. Whereas in a large community, you have to remember they have to push a button and they do need to wait for someone to get there to help them. Um, so those are things that you have to consider when you're looking at senior living. Yeah, I think looking at the financial, I know as a real estate agent, I'll sit down with somebody and we'll go over what their monthly costs are, you know, what their carrying costs are, property taxes, doing repairs, insurance, waiting for the person to come do your yard, having food delivered. When you put all those numbers together, you're like, I could be living in some place and I could be doing everything for me. What am I doing? So that's one thing. And the other thing that I've seen is that people wait too long. I had a client, um, such a sweet man, and he was getting ready to move into senior living. He said, I'm just going to wait a couple months. 
So I'm going to wait through the holidays. So I called him after the holidays and he didn't answer his phone. Mm -hmm. I had his daughter's number. I called the daughter and she said, actually, he fell and tripped in his house over the holidays and laid there in the freezing cold for three days mm -hmm. and broke a hip and will be permanently in a wheelchair. And so he, he missed like that independent living, that fun part. And not that it's not fun, you know, to be in assisted living, but you know, obviously you want to be able to enjoy where you're living and enjoy all the different things. So those are just, yes, pass, the, pass her down. Okay. So just real quickly, I mean, if you do decide to take some tours and come see any of us, we all have like a cost comparison sheet that will help you think about all the things you're paying for at home that would, are included with your rooms with us. So um, just be sure to ask for that. Yeah, when you went, put pen to paper, you're like, gosh, it's not that much more. I can give up my car, I'm paying car insurance. I can sell my car, you know, all of those different things. John, did you want to say more? I just want to, I mean, going back to, I, I had a patient, I'm not going to give out names or anything, but she went home from a, a hospital stay and she said, well, I'm just going to do four hours of home care. Uh, a month later, I, well, about two months later, I spoke to her again. I kept calling and checking on her. Um, by that point, her care had gotten so high. She was bringing in 16 hours of home care a day. She actually needed two people to help her, but she was only bringing in one. Uh, she was paying someone to do the yard. She was paying someone to take care of her dogs. She was paying an Uber. She was paying, you know, um, the food to be delivered, you know, and her expenses were now well over $20,000 a month for all this coming into her home. Um, she only brought in $4,800 a month. And unfortunately, when I got there to sit down with her, the home care company actually was calling to fire her to say, well, you owe us 30,000, so we're not gonna pay you. We're not gonna come in more. So she was gonna be stuck in her home all alone. Again, I, I, you know, that's one of the things that just breaks my heart is that people don't look at all their options and look at everything that's out there. There are, there are a ton of senior living. There are a ton of ancillary services. There's so much you can do. There's so many benefits that are out there. Um, you know, don't be scared to ask and don't be scared to, you know, to look at all your options. Well, you have the mic. Let's ask you this. So veterans, aid and attendance, mm -hmm. Medicare, Medicaid, long-term insurance, just real quick, talk about some of those things. I think the veterans aid, a lot of people don't know about. So. Right. So if you are a veteran or the spouse of a veteran, um, it's like your long-term care insurance. If that uh, veteran was active duty during wartime, had to be active duty one day during wartime, uh, VA aid and attendance will pay for you to be in an assisted living. Um, it'll also pay for home care, but you have to be a little careful with that because um, home care, the money goes to the actual uh, processor, whereas assisted living, that money would go to you to help pay for your assisted living. So VA aid and attendance for a uh, spouse. And there's a flyer over here. Yeah, he's got a flyer and he also has this book that's called Planning for Your Discharge. And this is awesome. So um, come get this. And then for people who are online, we will email you yes. uh, these documents too. So aid and attendance for a surviving spouse is about $1,400 a month. For a, a veteran is $2,600 a month. That's money that goes to you for the rest of your life for your care. Um, Medicaid, yes. Um, Medicaid is always an option when you spend down, you run out of money. Um, there are there are some real requirements. Um, there's a you have to meet two necessities. You have to meet financial necessity and you have to meet care necessity. Um, usually, to meet care necessity, it's um, a cognitive impairment and usually max assist on at least one activity of daily living. So you know you can't get out of bed without somebody lifting you. That would be max assist, somebody had to lift you. Um, financially, so there's some waivers that were going on during COVID and it was bumped up to 27, but now I think it's back down to 25, 32 a month. It's 20, 2742. 2742. So 2742 in monthly mm -hmm. income and $2,000 in liquid assets. Um, so, and then not every community takes Medicaid. So, so so there's two types of Medicaid. There's Star Plus waiver for assisted living, and then there's Star Plus waiver for nursing home. So, you know, we, 
we can explain that, but it, it takes a little bit of a time. Okay. Um, the, the Star Plus waiver for assisted living is a waitlist program. You have to get on the list, your name comes up, you move into a community that they help pay for. Um, nursing home or skilled nursing, it's much easier to find. You just have to meet the care. And a lot of families will say, yeah, I'm gonna put mom in a, my, my mom needs to go to a nursing home and all mom needs is med management, you know? And I'm like, okay, that's, that's not appropriate. Um, you know, to go take somebody who had total independence to put to two people in a room, you know, when all she needs is food and, and med management, kind of jumping a lot of stages. But there are some, some times when it, it is not an option. Um, and then another financial way that people pay is long-term care policy. So if you have a long-term care policy, uh, make sure you know if it is well, either a period or is it a dollar amount? So um, they're written either as a period, like we're gonna give you this care for five years or you get $500,000 worth of care. So you have to know that first because that really decides how you spend it. Because if it's if it's a period, then we wanna spend every dollar so you got every dollar out of that long-term care within five years. And you you put all your other money in the bank for that five years. If it's a, if it's a dollar amount, Let's say it's five hundred thousand or two hundred fifty, then we want to spread that out as long as possible. But so you get as much of that money as possible. So long term care policies are are the other way. So we talked Medicaid, we talked VA long term, um, private pay. You know a lot of you know as you age, we all need care. It's unfortunately here in Austin up. We're we're all aging, right? Aging, you know. So um, the average person, just so you know. If they really start to need care, it's it costs about three hundred and sixty thousand. So I really drives me crazy. For how long? That's just the average. I don't know. You know, I guess some people could like my mother lived in assisted living six years, and then she lived in a skilled nursing for two. So okay. you know, I think I think it just depends, um, and it depends on how soon you're proactive. If you're reactive, like I said, we help a lot of families who are just charging from hospitals and rehabs. And, and that's a reactive, they have to do something now, it's gonna be more expensive because you didn't pick and you didn't go in leading the least least amount of care. You usually come out of the hospital needing the most care. And so it, it's more expensive. Is your head swirling? <laughs> Sorry. So the thing is, it's all about planning. And I know a lot of people who come to our events, they're our planners. So you guys are the ones who are here to try to figure it all out. So you're not in a situation that you have to decide tomorrow. So we're glad that you're here, but we also hope that you'll help some other people who aren't here, uh, who might be at that more critical stage. Um, but I do think that all of us are big proponents of visiting and touring communities early on. Go really early, go visit all of them, get a concept for what they can offer you and then make your wishes known to your loved ones. Cause those helicopter kids are gonna come in and do what they think is best and it might not be what you want. So, um, did you- right, We do have, I do have some seniors that are don't have children or are alone. Um, and we do kind of do that whole thing where we go through, okay, if I have to go to assisted living, this is the community I want to go to. If I need to go to rehab, this is where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So we kind of put all that in place for them. So, and they give it to their doctor. They give it to their loved ones or neighbors and so that they have it. So that's one thing we do. We do tour with the family, kind of help them get, get all that in order so that when that event occurs, they're ready. Were you going to say something? I just wanted to say something about the long-term care policy. Okay. Um, for nursing homes, we don't bill. That's considered third-party billing. So we don't bill that. We bill family privately, and you have to submit claims. I don't know if that's how it works for AL. Yeah. So you still have to have that money set aside to pay privately and get reimbursed. Okay. So you have a couple months or whatever until you might yeah. get the money. Nine, you do 100 days. There's a whole bunch period. of games on all of this. And it all comes down to planning, and you want to talk to professionals. Um, so I've gone through the questions kind of, um, kind of out of order. Sorry about that. Um, but is there anything else you want to just say? I know we were going to talk about what it, what's a, uh, a day in the life at your community is like. Do you want to just say a typical person, what time would they get up and what might happen during the day and uh, what kind of meals, where would they have their meals and things like that? 
meal time can be either in their room or the dining room. We encourage everybody to come to the dining room because you eat more when you're socializing. Um, and food is typically a little warmer if it's in the dining room. Um, starts out with meal service, getting ready for the day, rehab, activities, um, things that, you know, on your leisure, um, you can go out with your friends if you want to, um, as long as it's appropriate and for that patient. Um, that's kind of the day. <laughs> and and to add to that, activities, I mean, activities yeah. and meals, <laughs> but we invite you at any of our communities, uh, meals is a very important meal of the day. Yes. Um, we have monthly events at every community here. Um, so we welcome you to come and join us and try it and dine in and no commitment. And so you can meet some friends, uh, but pretty much we keep them busy with activities and socialization and the meals that and events. And there's a variety, isn't there? So, Absolutely. you know, it's not just artistic. It might be more, you know, academic or, yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, the only difference with food um, at our community, because we do have a large population of independent residents, we actually have our main dining room, and then we also have a bistro that has a dedicated chef, where oftentimes you'll find our residents, they don't, our independent residents, they don't like to get up before 10 a.m., so we kind of <laughs> trust everything, so uh, that's kind of how we uh, create our bistro, is so that our residents were restricted by our main dining hours, having breakfast from 7 to 9, Get up at 10 so they can go to the exercise at 10 and then they'll go to the bistro and they have the option to have breakfast up to 11 30. you have a pool andrea you have an outdoor pool so tell us about the pool activities so the pool is outdoor it's heated salt water um, we do aquatic therapy uh twice a week for the residents that's just included in their monthly rent it's not covered as much as everyone would like it to be outdoors but they keep it about 80 40 degrees and you've got a pool too. Well, <laughs> our pool is under construction. Oh, okay. We had a little difficulty in COVID, so it's it is under construction. We shut it down temporarily. But um, at Arbor Terrace, we do provide three meals a day, seven days a week. We have a fabulous chef. He was actually in um, Taste Like Travis oh, this wow. weekend uh, with Iron Wolf distillery he infused some of their products in his food i heard it was a big hit but uh we do have a little 24-hour coffee bar where people can go in the morning and get muffins and then they might have something later in the afternoon chips or cookies or both or salty sweet um, but it's a self-serve and so it's an option too there's lots of opportunity for food in all of our communities. <laughs> Food's a big part of it. And happy hours. And, yeah. Oh, and happy hours. Do y'all have happy hours? We do. <laughs> Three days a week. <laughs> Three days a week you have them. How about you, Sandra? Uh, we have, so we have it on Thursdays because we do it with live entertainment, but the residents are offered wine and beer at lunch and dinner. At lunch and dinner. Okay. Every Wednesday and every Friday at Lakeway, we have happy hours. <laughs> We have to have orders for alcohol. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Probably a safety issue. Right. Safety <laughs> issue there. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I'll bring a mic to you so that you can ask. I'll bring the mic to you. And we do this again for our online people. Um, okay, you were talking about um, that people have to pay for their um, like assisted living and all that. Is, is that just just during like the 90 days or whatever their um, the period is on their long-term care insurance? That's so, so it really depends on your policy. Let's just say your policy pays $100 a day for assisted living. Then we've got to figure out, okay, are we talking about one person or two people going into assisted living? Um, you know, what is the cost of the apartment you pick? So if you pick an apartment that's 5,900 with care, but your long-term care is only paying three thousand, and you've got to pay that difference. Um, but going back to the policy, all your policies for long-term care have a daily rate for home care, for assisted living, or skilled nursing. Um, really, old policies won't have the assisted living; they'll just have the other two. Um, and then it'll have um, a copay period. And yes, you have to have that. You have to pay and present them to receipts to activate the, the actual policy. Once you've activated the policy, you no longer pay premiums and, and it goes from there. All right, we have another question back here. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, 
a lot of people are paying for a long uh, for their care these days with life insurance. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you said it, I didn't hear it, but that's not my main thing. I'm a former school administrator and I like to talk about leadership. And some of these places, it's a revolving door. Uh, I, I volunteer at the Little Brookdale and uh, <laughs> wonderful place and wonderful staff. But the leader there just left the other day. So and, uh, and it was kind of like, <laughs> where is he? <laughs> he went to another Brookdale. Yeah, anyway, uh, so People I, don't leave Brookdale. They just go to another Brookdale. Yeah. What, I, what <laughs> I want to say, and I go to all of these different places, is uh, Belmont has the same administrator that they had the day it opened. <laughs> and uh, that's not everything, you know, but the leadership. Watch for these places that they, you know, where's John? Well, he's gone. I mean, uh, that's my, I don't have it's a no, comment. No, it's, I just comment. Talk, it's just a comment. Okay. Okay. We welcome comments. I think, you know, what we are having this kind of a problem with employment. Um, particularly in Lake Travis, just because it's really hard to get employees to come and live here. So that's one of the things. But John, you wanted to say something? Well, yeah, I mean, yes, the, the entire healthcare industry and senior living industry is kind of going through this whole, whole tor turmoil since COVID. Um, and then you add to it the economy, you add to it the, the uh, labor shortage, um, and people are just making life decisions differently. A lot of people are, are moving from state to state that we didn't see before and people are moving in. So yes, you're having turnover. Um, I definitely think when it comes to touring a community, um, when we tour with a family, we always want to try to introduce them to the executive director because you're right. That is the leader of the building. Okay. But also the nurse. The nurse is the person who writes the care plan. That is the person you're going to interact the most with. And that's who you need to get the most connection with, especially in the skilled nursing and especially in the assisted living. Um, you know, those those are the people that are most important. Um, and if they're there long term, that's a big plus. Does it guarantee care? No, but it does usually impact care. Yeah. The only other thing I would add, yes, about uh, having that strong tenure of your leadership, but also. I encourage when we have residents and families touring the building to actually talk to the frontline staff and ask them how long that they've been there. Because those are the people that are and that are helping day in and day out and care for those individuals. And when you're looking at senior living, you want to make sure that you have that consistency. You don't, as an adult child and or the senior, you don't want to have to relay your preferences, things that you want day in and day out we have that revolving door. So I, I find it not only from the leadership standpoint, but also those frontline staff and how long they've been there. John, in your information, do you have a list of questions that you would ask? There's some in the beginning of, well, but it's mainly around planning a discharge. Okay. Because that is so much more different. I mean, when you're looking for senior living, it's included, but yeah, that's more about a hospital stay. Okay. Um, also, don't be scared to talk to other residents. Mm -hmm. um, I actually know of some communities that, they actually have residents do the tour. Um, so it's a way to connect them. We have a question online. So I, I know someone who is struggling to get in-home attendant care. She uses a Hoyer and has an ostomy and catheter. Is there a place that would take her? And that's what we were talking about before. Who is that? community that can take that high acute care and I think we found out long-term care skilled nursing facilities can take that high acuity you run into um, obstacles or barriers sometimes depending on how much they weigh with and how high the Hoyer will go but ostomies uh, Foley catheters Hoyer lifts those are common everyday things we take care of that's in the highest level here John wants to talk because well, not well, all all of the... Right. There are assisted living yeah, that can do lawyers. There are assisted living that can do okay. sliding scale diabetes. There are assisted living that can do uh, colostomies, catheters, peg tubes. Um, and, and there's even some that'll consider a trait because they're ran by doctors and nurses. So there's lots of stuff out there. Again, you always start with the care and then you go from there. Uh, you go from care to budget. Take the mic. So, right, I'm done. Okay. I was going to ask you, gosh. Do you ever get that question in your mind then it leaves your mind? Isn't that part of what you do, John, so that people aren't on the phone or on the internet? Could people just call and say, oh, it used to be that 
you could smoke in some communities. Now I don't know if you could smoke anywhere, but well, that that's a lot a of question. communities will allow you to smoke outside certain communities. But just, that would be a question you just call you and you'd be like, yeah, there's three instead yeah. of calling 35 of them or 40, and you don't charge anything. No. You're free. So why why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, basically. I mean the biggie with Google and everybody knows. <laughs> Google is great if you have a simple, single question. Um, when you Google assisted living or memory care, you get home health, home care, hospice, apartments, independent living. Uh, everybody wants to play in the pond and Google doesn't understand how to differentiate. Um, and if you're looking for a two bedroom with a garage, you know, we I've been in all the communities from New Braunfels to Waco um, and my staff has as well. They're out there, we can find it. And our system is designed to match all that for you. So let's just have one final um, comment. If you'd like to just say one final thing about your community or anything you want everybody to know out in the internet or here in our building. Um, we recently underwent our quality star rating. Um, every year you have an annual inspection by the Department of Health and Human Services. And it's based anywhere from one star to five star. And being privately owned and operated, we don't have a huge um, corporate company to back us as far as policies and procedures and techniques and support staff. So we were able to achieve our five star rating. Um, and that has been just super huge and huge for us. And we're very, very proud. Right. Perfect. Um, well, as the holidays are coming, like Teresa mentioned, we have a lot going on, Oktoberfest, um, we have a health care coming up, uh, we have caregiver support, Parkinson support groups at our Brookdale Lakeway community, uh, we welcome and welcome you and we hope to see you there soon. I would just encourage y'all to come by. Um, I, I'm an advocate of looking earlier than later, um, even if you're not ready, I think it would give it every individual that peace of mind that you're not having to narrow your searches when you look because of a crisis, that you have that peace of mind and you can tell your adult child where you would want to be when something comes up. Um, and kind of off of what I was saying earlier about, it's about the people and the residents. So I encourage anybody who tours or comes by, just even coming back by if they haven't had the dining experience, to just really get immersed and hear what it would be like in a day at our community from a resident. And I would encourage you all to come to the uh, Senior Expo because we can all bring invitations for whatever we've got going on yeah. for the next <laughs> last quarter. Yeah. And for the Senior Expo, our food's being provided by Arbor Terrace. So we're really thankful for that. So everybody, thank you so much for coming. There's information here from our speakers and we hope to see you next month. Bye. Thank you.
That's all you gotta figure all that out. And that's what I did with two challenges in terms of like um they love the they're going to make decisions. You don't have your well, I had a job. You know, and so they they back off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, my sister and my brother in law and I all live here. We're getting our 60s, heading towards 70s now. So, we have to think about these things. Yeah. yeah. And our service is free and confidential. We're the only one that can go back. Uh, the name of your group is CS. Okay. My name's Bernard. So, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. How are you? I'm doing well. Anything I know, I have to call you. Call you. That's what we try to do. Yeah. Just all the curiosity. How you? How you? You have a yeah. employee doing models. I have social worker, a nurse, so, yeah. and all that. What do you mean by keep this going? Oh, oh. So we're we're funded by the communities and the senior industry, so they pay us, and then we use that. Money oh, okay. Okay, that makes so, sense. And I'm retired, so I'm retired. I I, I got into this. My mother was diagnosed with dementia. Uh, um, doctor said, hey, it's fine. A few days later, she put the TV dinner in the toaster oven and burned the casita. Uh, it took me six months, and often families don't have that six months. So uh, that's why I started the business. So the business makes money, and I'm not retired, so I don't have to worry about it. Now, you also mentioned about a number about how um, general average people spend X amount of money. Uh, the average person who needs care is about 360 Oh, so a thousand a, a day, three hundred sixty. Okay. Well, but it, it, it could be three I know. months, six I months. Know. I don't know. I yeah, know. everybody's I know. different. But that's the average. Um, and and the reason I throw that out there is because I don't think financial advisors ever talk to people about it. Exactly. They say, "Well, you've got a." Well, they're like 700,000 in the bank. Number. Well, wait a minute. But if yeah. I need care and 360 of it's gone tomorrow, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. Now you're talking well, about a lifetime. That's the average. average the average 360,000 just on care yeah. that's not covered by Medicare. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That, that, that's a, it, I have never heard this number. Yeah. And I'm always wondering about this number. Yeah. <laughs> so and it just depends. I mean, answer. some people are independent and pass away and don't spend any money. Other people yeah. end up in assisted living, memory care, skilled nursing, and, and the cost can be yeah. pretty high. Uh, so I have decided the further I can stay away from all the the belly it is. Right. But, but again, but like I, I was talking I, to the yeah. men, you gotta have a plan because you don't ever want to get into a hospital situation where the hospital starts making decisions for you. And that's what happens. So if you know which assisted living, you know where you want to go for rehab, you know what home care, what home health, then you're making those decisions, not the hospital. Right, right, right. Hi, Angela. Hi, Angela. I'm with Three Oaks Hospital. Yeah, how are you well? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm new with you. Okay. Thank you. And I'm covering like the area of yeah. uh, Liberty Hill, yes, yeah. okay. around yeah. the Burnet. I don't know if you have information so I have, country. Or... So, yeah, I have uh, Greg, who's my yeah, advisor he's here. He covers from here all the way out to Marble Falls and okay. in Plano. Okay. Um, Robin covers Cedar Park, all, well, North Austin, all the way to Georgetown, mm -hmm. Cedar Park. Okay. Uh, Matthew is Rail Rock. Uh, Aaron is I 35, all the way to Georgetown from North Austin. I cover the whole area, Debbie covers the whole area. Okay. So we, 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 I got staff all over. Um, we do also facilitate networking. Okay. Um, like this morning, we held one at uh, Nero, heading uh, to the flight up the road. Okay. Uh, Tuesday morning, 8 30 to 10. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. If you don't mind, I'll put you on the email. And yes, let me give you my email address. It's not on there. I don't have any official cards yet. So, oh, I love your pen. I got a couple over there. Oh, unless, nice. you, unless you gave them all away. Give away all my pens. Less than 10? No, there's 10 left. All right. My writing is too big, but that's okay. I'll make it work. Yeah. You'll get that. At, it's a Roberts at three of So there you right. go. Okay, so well, then I'll look forward to coming to that. And yeah, if we can uh, get together and uh, work some of the common areas, that would be great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I talked to her. I was like, she. She wants to, but she can't yeah, get corporate. Yeah. And I said, hey, I mean, you are missing. Thank you. And I would love for her to be here because we offer such a. Yeah. Okay, let's middle of November. Middle of November. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you get a bus when they're going to watch it. Or what? We'll do the registry. Oh. Yeah.
Okay. Uh, and I'll do it. And she got the boxes for the office enough. So you got your pens. I'll just see if you got your pens. You can just support the owner. I didn't do it. Oh, no, you're they, they said that, that she spoke to them. And when I spoke to her, she said, I did not. I do. I do. I would like to put eyes on her. Yes. She had seen a very frazzled last night. She was like, oh, she had a I'm like, get a place for mom to do a Because I only sent you 10. And you asked for five apartments and five independent living. That's what I sent you. I don't see you on it. I should be you. you she's big on the computer. And, 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 she, and she's blown herself up. Now, let me just confirm that you do not give the phone number to the community. You just give the register that you want. I just say I'm working with Cindy Cummins. Yeah. And I'm not reiterating that. Yeah, that's all. It's, the email just says I'm working with Cindy Cummins yeah. and for her mother. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. it. That's yeah. all they get. Yeah. And of course, they don't like you. But... Yeah, the community wants more info, but a lot of times they don't. But they want, bomb, but they want to bomb. They want to bomb. No, they follow right now. So not. she supposedly got on the internet at two fifteen, with or got on her Facebook on two fifteen. She received four phone calls by three o'clock. So they started blowing up her phone, yeah. and they're probably blowing up her phone. And I get yeah. emailed back and forth that it wasn't me. Yeah, and... I'll reiterate with it. But I'm wondering if I'm going to even be able to tell her how to do this. Because when I first came, she said, I'm getting rid of that email. So I just wanted to have to do this probably be a bit of a set. I'm not going to be able to I think if you can get her to find a place. Exactly. And then, you like, you know, pull the pin. The thing is, it's telling me, you know, this is how much. And then it folds. I don't remember how it works. There we go. Yeah. But and that's why I'm like, okay. So then, if you want the garage and you want, yeah, it's out there. Yeah. You're I feel I feel I feel Thank you. 